This is a complete guide to MongoDB so that you can store any data you need to in your Discord bot. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you're going to go ahead and do is click the link in the description to get to MongoDB. And you're just going to go ahead and click on try free at the top here. Now that you're here, you can go ahead and create an account or you could just go ahead and sign up with Google. That's what I'm going to do. So just go ahead and create your account, agree to the terms, and then we can go on and move to the next step. One thing to note is if you do sign up with Google, you are going to have to link my accounts. Otherwise, you're going to have to log in with something else. So just go ahead and click on link my accounts. Now you might need to fill out this survey right here. Um, this is just the MongoDB survey on what you're using it for. So just go ahead and fill that out. Then you can just go ahead and click on finish and we will be in our database here. All right, so now that we're here, we're gonna go ahead and click on create a deployment. So we can just go ahead and click on create and you're gonna have to select a plan. I'm gonna go ahead and select the free plan because we don't wanna pay for this. And we can just go ahead and give it a name. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this database and we can go ahead and select the free one. We can select the server we want. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the US one and we're gonna go ahead and click on create at the bottom here. So now we have this, we're gonna go ahead and enter our username and password within this because we're gonna be accessing this later. So just make sure you save this because we're gonna be using it in like 30 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my username and I'm also going to go ahead and put in a password. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on create user. All right, so now that we have our user right here, we have our username and our authentication type. We can actually go ahead and go back over to the overview. All right, so now we're here, we have our database and we can go ahead and connect to it. But before we do that, let's actually go ahead and go over to network access and we're going to go ahead and click on add IP. So in here, we're going to go ahead and click on allow from anywhere, or allow access from anywhere. And the reason for this is because if you host your bot, you're going to need to allow access from anywhere, including that host IP. And sometimes the host doesn't provide an IP. So just go ahead and click on allow access from anywhere and then just go ahead and click on confirm. So now we have allowed our IP. If you don't allow an IP like this, your MongoDB will not actually connect because it needs an approved IP address for this to actually work. So now we can go back over to the overview. Just keep in mind, we're going to make sure this pens and then successfully adds uh, and then we can actually go back over there but once it's done we can go ahead and come back over to the database and we can go ahead and click on connect we're going to go ahead and click on drivers here and we can go ahead and get our driver which is going to be your code language so for me it's going to be node.js and we're going to be using 5.5 or later so now we're going to go ahead and follow these steps to code the mongodb within our project so let's go ahead and actually do that all right so step number one is install mongodb so we're going to go over to the terminal and we can go ahead and do MPM I and we're going to go ahead and do mongoose just like that and it's going to go ahead and install so just go ahead and give it a couple of seconds and once it's done we're actually going to go ahead and move on to the next step here all right so now that we're done we're going to go over into our dot env now obviously i've taken the token out here because i can't show that but we're going to go ahead and create a new variable i'm going to go ahead and call this mongo url we can do equals and we're going to go over to mongodb again and in here we're going to go ahead and copy this url we can go ahead and click the copy button and we're going to go back into that and we can go ahead and paste it so so this is going to be where you're putting your username and password. So for me, my username was Jackson and my password is going to go within this. So we can go ahead and remove password and I'm going to put that password in. I can't show it obviously, but make sure you go ahead and do that properly. Otherwise, this step will not work. And then once you're done, make sure you save the file as well. All right. So now we're actually going to go ahead and connect here. So we're going to go over to our ready.js and this is where our code comes in. This is not MongoDB code uh, within the guide. So that's where this tutorial comes in. So up here, we're going to go ahead and do const and we can go ahead and install or define mongoose so that is going to be a mongoose we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get mongoose here as well then we can get our mongo url so we can do const mongo url equals and we can do process.env.mongo url just like that that is going to be the variable name we just set within our env now we're going to come down here after this console.log i guess or we could technically do it above it um, but i'm just going to do it down here and we can say if and we can say no mongo url then we can just go ahead and return and do nothing then we can say await mongoose.connect and we can go ahead and get our mongo url and we can do or and we can do an empty string and we're going to go ahead and open this up we can go ahead and get use new and we can do url parser and we're going to go ahead and set that to true and we can also do use unified and we can do topology and that is also going to be set to true now in the old guide there was a keep alive and that is actually deprecated so we're not going to be using that anymore here now we can come down here and we're going to say if mongoose and we can do dot connect then we can open this up and we can go ahead and console.log we're going to go ahead and say i have connected to the database and we can go ahead and add a semicolon then we can do else and we're going to go ahead and console.log we can go ahead and say i cannot connect to the database 
right now and we're gonna add those three dots just to make it look a little bit more like it failed so now that we've gone ahead and connected let's just go ahead and run a couple of commands or create a couple of commands so we can actually go ahead and test this schema but before we do that we're gonna have to create a schema folder so let's go over to our src and we're gonna go ahead and create schemas and we can open that up or just click enter then in here we're gonna go ahead and create our first schema so this is going to be we could just do test.js and within this we're gonna go ahead and do const and we're gonna go ahead and define our schema and we can also get our model and then we can do equals require and we're gonna go ahead and get our mongoose package again all right so now that we have our schema here let's go ahead and do let test equals new schema we're gonna open this up we can do name and that is going to be our string now we can save as much data as you want and you could also do number you could do array you could do object but i'm just going to go ahead and save one value that is going to be our name which is going to be our string then we can go ahead and export this so we can do module.exports and we can do model and we're going to go ahead and do test schema and we can go ahead and set that to test and i'm actually going to go ahead and give it a couple of numbers because you cannot have this name duplicated within your mongo so every time you create a new schema this string value has to be unique so if you add a couple of numbers in there no matter what you name it it should be unique so after we do that we can actually go ahead and move on to creating the code to test this out so we can go over to community or we could just go ahead and do it in other i guess and i'm going to go ahead and do data schema.js i'm also going to go ahead and create two more so we can do test schema.js and we're finally going to go ahead and create delete schema.js so within the test schema i'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some code so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and define the test so we're going to be using autocomplete for this so you can do require you can do dot dot slash dot dot slash you can get schemas and then you can get your folder or your file that's how you get the schema folder or file within your code so just make sure you do that so you're going to go ahead and define that up here we can just go ahead and create a command with a basic string input and then to create the schema input, we're going to do await test schema.create and we can do name, which is going to be string. Now in the test.js schema, we had name, which is string. And within this, we have name, which is our string value right here. And then we're just going to go ahead and reply. So we've created it here. Now within the data schema, we're going to go ahead and add some code as well. This is going to be the exact same method as we did before for getting the schema file. And we're going to go ahead and call this read schema. We do not need a string input. We're going to go ahead and get the data by doing await test schema dot find and then we're going to use some logic here by creating an array and doing data dot for each and we can do async our data and we can go ahead and push the data dot name to the values so that when we log this as a join we get all of the values no matter how many we have this is basically generic mongodb setup and usage so now we can actually go ahead and delete that so we're going to go ahead and go into our delete schema and we can go ahead and paste our delete code and this is going to be the same method for getting the schema it's going to be the same command setup we're going to go ahead and get our data using find and we can use data dot for each again and this time we're going to delete each one with that name so this deletes everything within that schema now you could also do dot find one and then you could do name and you could go ahead and input your specific string name but this is only if you know what that string name is going to be. So if you don't, then just go ahead and use the for each method. So now we can actually go ahead and save all of these files and we can open up our new terminal and I'm going to go ahead and run node space dot here. So now as you can see, it's going to go ahead and run this code and then it's going to go ahead and say, that it is turning on and it says it has connected to the schema successfully all right so now that we've connected to the database and turned it on let's go over into our discord server to test out saving some data and checking it and deleting it using the code that we just created all right so in here we can go ahead and start off i'm going to go ahead and get our test schema command and we're going to go ahead and put an input in here so i'm going to go ahead and say this is database string saving and we can go ahead and click enter and it's going to say it saved the data which is great so now let's go ahead and do read schema command and we're going to go ahead and just click enter here and as you can see we have one string value saved within the database that is the exact string value we put in here so now let's go ahead and try to add one more so we can go ahead and do test schema again and this time i'm going to go ahead and put in this is value two and we can go ahead and click enter and we can go ahead and do our read schema one more time and as you can see now we have two values in here so let's go ahead and delete this code or this string values so we can go ahead and delete it and now they're all gone so if we go ahead and do our read schema i believe it's actually going to fail and return nothing because i did not do any error handling there because the string is obviously empty um, but you should do that for your code but as you can see it did delete it 
So now let's actually go ahead and add one more to it. So we can do our schema and we can go ahead and say this is value one. And if we go ahead and do read schema again, as you can see, we have our this is value one string within that schema. So that is a complete MongoDB guide and how you can actually connect to MongoDB and use it. Keep in mind, there are many, many functions that are way more complicated and not included in this video. Um, you can actually go ahead and read the MongoDB docs for this. If you have any questions on a specific MongoDB application once you've got this set up and working or need any help with this at all, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.